Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of OK Zoomer. I'm your host, Aaron Lichtig, Zometry Guy and former Jeopardy! champion. And today I'm here with Betsy and Michael Jasper of Tarka. Now, Tarka is a website uh, on which they break down complex engineering topics into very entertaining and informative videos, and these, these appear on YouTube as well. Um, and the whole purpose of Tarka is to democratize the access to mechanical engineering knowledge. So welcome, Betsy and Michael. Thanks for joining. Thank you for having us. Thanks. Excellent. So first of all, what does Tarka mean? Tarka is the Finnish word for exact or very precise. Mm. Um, and so when it comes to mechanical engineering and mechanical design, the devil's in the details. And so you have to be very exact and very precise with things. It is our passion to be exacting in nature. And so, yeah, we chose to name our business after the Finnish word. Excellent. So how did Tarka get started? Yeah, well, we sort of looked at the internet uh, over the past 15 years and we saw what uh, what was available in electronics and software and sort of the effect that that had had on the maker community, on also practicing engineers and folks that are just, they have an idea and they, they want to get it out into the world. And what had happened was people were using the internet to democratize the access to this information. And, and, and so to, to such an extent that now in the software community, having a traditional four-year degree isn't even always required because people have sort of self-learned over the internet. And we looked and mechanical wasn't quite there. Mechanical engineering and topics related to manufacturing, it, it, we didn't feel that it was well enough represented and we wanted to try and uh, maybe address that a little bit and get that ball rolling. And uh, so that's what really kind of inspired us to start creating the videos and the content. Video is such a engaging way to deliver information and, and, uh, and, and we sort of just took it from there. What are some of the coolest projects you've worked on? So, I mean, in our whole careers as engineers, um, uh, most of my experience is in aerospace. Mm -hmm. And I think my favorite project that I've worked on was um, at my time at Bell Helicopter on the V-22 program. So the V-22 is like this crazy aircraft called a tilt rotor where it has these nacelles at the end of the wings and it flies like, a helicopter or an airplane um, and I was on the transmission team so it was really cool it's these huge gearboxes um, and yeah a lot of challenges along with that um, with like the repair and maintenance and then engineering investigations so I don't know that was the coolest thing I worked on. Nice. Yeah I, I, you came from uh, Betsy and I have very different experience uh, which is kind of nice at Target because uh, you know, we can kind of, mechanical engineering is very broad, right? There's lots of different topics, there's lots of different areas. And so, uh, you know, there's oftentimes we see problems or there's particular topics that we might want to cover. And, uh, you know, I, I might not be familiar with it, but Betsy is or, or vice versa. So I, I came from the energy industry. Uh, I, I left a few years ago. I work in robotics now, but, uh, you know, the energy industry was very interesting because uh, everything's very big and heavy and uh, a lot of high pressure and noise and pumping. And I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, and you know, now I'm sort of in a different field working in, in robotics where everything's very clean and electronic and, and everything like that, but. Very, very Tarka. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, <laughs> even in the energy industry, I was amazed at the, the level of precision. We were, you know, tense tolerances for seal bores and things like that and you had highly erosive flows. So, uh, you know, I think in both of our careers that, that, that interest and passion for precision is really the constant uh, across all these different sort of projects that we work on. What are some of the things you have coming up on Tarka over the next few months or next year? Yeah, well, yeah, well so we just, we just finished a LinkedIn learning course on engineering okay. drawings. Uh, and that, that really came about uh, sort of, that was a topic that we were kind of passionate about from the beginning. And we find that a lot of people that are first starting their careers, they don't quite have the preparation in a traditional four-year university program to go create a drawing that a manufacturer can, 
can run with and actually produce good parts. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the, you know, in, in our career, we saw that was a big issue. We wanted to try and maybe address that a little bit. And so we actually partnered with LinkedIn Learning uh, and, and created a course for them, which is available on their platform now. Yeah, and um, you can find the course. We'll link to it on our website, uh, tarka.co slash drawings. Hmm. Um, yeah, we're really excited about it. Like you said, it's just not really taught in school very well. And um, we wanted to give people the opportunity to really learn how to make drawings without needing to. Um, um, usually it's on the job training. You learn from other engineers and it can be embarrassing when you make mistakes and errors because there's it's just really difficult to learn. So. That's why we made the course. And then, yeah, from the manufacturing perspective, uh, it's very, if you make a bad drawing, you're going to get a lot of no quotes. And in, even if you get a quote, you're going to frustrate the shop or you might pay more for it or get a bad part. And uh, it's just, we, we wanted to reduce that friction. Yes. So, but yeah, in terms of future projects coming up, so we, we address drawings. That's, that's step one. And then step two is the next can of worms, which is GD and T. Um, so we're going to, we're going to sort of dive into that topic. In fact, we've got our, our, uh, our gauges here. We can make little gauges and parts and we're going to talk about how all that works. And, um, you know, one of the, one of the constants with Tark is we want to, we don't want to just have slides on a screen. There's a lot of that on YouTube already. Uh, it's not very engaging. It's also not that informative. So we've always, in all of our videos, tried to have like demonstrable, illustrations of what we're trying to talk about. And uh, so this is, you know, so we want to show with GDNT, we want to show, okay, this is what it, this is how you put it on the drawing. This is what it means in real life. This is how you inspect it. And then maybe some thoughts about the implications down the road for manufacturing, you know, so some GDMT controls are easy, easy to inspect, easy to make, and then some are a huge pain and they're going to just create a lot of problems. And if you don't need it, you shouldn't use it. So it's kind of some of the stuff we're going to dive into. Yeah, and it's another one of these topics that can be difficult to teach yourself. It's mostly learned by experience, again, on the job training. So we're trying to make it easier for people to access this type of knowledge and to um, get a head start in learning this stuff. That's great. I can't wait to see that one. Our engineers here at Zometry have uh, taken a look at your 2D drawings course and they love it. They, they find it fantastic. So everybody listening today should check this out. It's a really great course on LinkedIn Learning. Now, thinking more broadly about manufacturing, what, what really excites you about the future of the field and where things are heading? We are very excited about manufacturing. Um, one of the things that we're working on right now is democratizing access to manufacturing knowledge. And we're actually working on this product to um, it's actually like this modular machine. Um, we're residents at the Autodesk Technology Center in Boston and we're prototyping the machine there. So we envision the future of um, manufacturing to be highly democratized. Um, if somebody wants to get into it, they can um, learn about it from our content and then hopefully use our machines um, and you know try to reduce the barrier to entry for actually manufacturing. Manufacturing and making stuff is really fun it's very cool, it's tactile, it's hands-on, it's very satisfying to design something and then make it and see it work. It, for me, that's the best feeling in the world and I want other people to experience that. I also think um, other people starting their own businesses, designing products and actually making them themselves. Uh, I envision that in the future to be more democratized. Um, so that's what excites me the most. What about you? Yeah, just, I mean, we sort of started at the, at the beginning of the session here, but uh, um, there's so much available. There's so much has changed in the last 15 years in terms of how innovation happens in, in, in the world. And it used to be with very high capital budgets, uh, you know, large corporations that would funnel in millions of dollars. And now you have a lot of really innovative stuff happening uh, in people's houses, uh, on their kitchen tables. 3D printing has done a lot to sort of... Uh, uh, sort of get that ball rolling. Now the CAD tools are becoming more accessible. They're kind of becoming uh, affordable for the first time. Uh, I, I, we can remember when we were in college and we, we used MasterCam in a class that we were in and it, it cost like $25,000. And now anybody can get access to a CAM program for either free if you're a small business or for just a few hundred dollars a year. It's, that's insane. That's crazy. Uh, and it's a very, very exciting time in manufacturing right now. 
uh, and you know, we, we, we just want to, we're excited by it all and we want to help in, in any way we can. Cool. Now you are a husband and wife team. So you are the hosts of Tarka as well as uh, partners outside of Tarka as well. How, how is it to work together on, on a project like this more professional project while being married in the offline world too? Yeah, we in, are. In a COVID-19 world, it's very convenient because we live in the same household. <laughs> that, yes, that is true. <laughs> yeah, we work really well together. We're two peas in a pod. We finish each other's. Sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we love working together. We love each other, obviously. We're married. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> we, we've been collaborating for a while. I mean, we, we started off as, as friends and, and, uh, you know, so it's working together is nothing new for us. It's, we've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. We were in a, um, the same like competition team in school. So oh, cool. yeah, we work well together. <laughs> awesome. Well, Betsy and Michael, thank you so much for joining OK Zoomer today. It was great to have you. Thank you great. so much for having us. Yeah. Thanks so much. All right, everybody, this has been another episode of OK Zoomer. Uh, thanks for joining, and we'll have another one out in a few days. Take care.